Uh, wormholes are seen as the magical solution to many of science's problems. Want to traverse long distances? Use a wormhole as a shortcut. Need to travel back in time? Yes, there's a wormhole for that. Ever wanted to visit an alternate universe? <laughs> yes, wormholes. Some solutions to general relativity even say that wormholes are the answer to what's at the center of a black hole. Essentially, wormholes are a bit of a Swiss army knife of cosmology and especially science fiction writing. They have been theorized to do many things, and their existence was first predicted over a hundred years ago, though the idea wasn't fully fleshed out at the time. But are all of these incredible possibilities just wishful thinking from sci-fi authors, or is there really something to this? What exactly are wormholes, and would they genuinely possess all of these unbelievable properties? Now, it all began in 1916, when physicists were trying to find solutions for Einstein's field equations in general relativity. Austrian physicist Ludwig Flamm was reviewing oh, one of the proposed solutions when he discovered that there was another possible solution. The formal idea of black holes had been introduced in these solutions, but Flamm speculated that there could be white holes as well. His proposed solution involved matter falling into a black hole and then being expelled through a white hole. The black and white holes would be connected by some sort of space-time conduit, but they would also be part of different universes. And the white hole would empty into an upside-down universe where time flowed backwards. This solution worked on paper, but it didn't garner a ton of attention until the idea was revisited by Einstein himself in 1935. Einstein collaborated with fellow physicist Nathan Rosen, and their 1935 paper expanded on the idea first put forward by Flamm. Their links between black and white holes were named Einstein-Rosen bridges and eventually given the colloquial name wormholes. In this paper, they also put forth the idea of wormholes connected to distant points in space-time within the same universe, essentially creating a shortcut. This is the functionality of wormholes that most people are familiar with, and it can be best described using the same analogy that you've probably already heard before. Imagine a flat sheet of paper that is the universe and draw one point on each end of the paper. Normally, to travel from point A to point B, oh, one would need to travel the entire length of the paper. But if you fold the paper and poke a pencil through the two points, traveling along the pencil instead of the paper would be a massive shortcut between the two distances. And that pencil oh, would be the tunnel of a wormhole. Then again, that's also the best case scenario. All of the maths and physics shows that these wormholes could exist, but they don't actually promise that they would be shortcuts. There's nothing stating that the wormhole couldn't take such a circuitous route between these two points that it would actually be the same distance or even longer than traveling the conventional way. Still, wormholes are an appealing idea, and they may be the key to interstellar space travel. The nearest star is about four light years away. We don't yet have the technology to send a crewed vehicle anywhere close to the speed of light. Such a journey would need to be a multi generational voyage using current technology, and that's only for our closest star. The discovery of wormholes would have immeasurable consequences for all of humanity, especially if we had the ability to create and manipulate them on our own. But but look, we're getting rather ahead of ourselves. Flam, Einstein, and Rosen simply showed that wormholes could exist, not that they do. Their solutions predicted the existence of wormholes, but they weren't the only possible solutions. Of course, black holes were first formally predicted as a result of Einstein's field equations in 1915, and after nearly 50 years, those black holes were proven to exist. It's certainly possible that wormholes are real as well, but there also may not be any wormholes in the universe for us to discover. Or maybe both of these things are true. Maybe wormholes are real, but they're impossible for us to discover because they're so short-lived. This was essentially the proposal laid out by American physicists John Archibald Wheeler and Robert W. Fuller. They didn't dispute the maths that predicted wormholes, but they looked a little closer at the wormholes themselves. In their paper, Causality and Multiply Connected Space-Time, they showed that the predicted wormholes, if they connected two points within the same universe, would be extremely unstable. Once a wormhole opened, gravitational effects would cause the tunnel to immediately pinch off and close forever. This would happen so fast that not even light could travel through the wormhole, so that doesn't bode well for humans and all of our dreams. Thus far, this has been the least theoretical version of wormholes. They were predicted by the same thing that brought us black holes, and all the math showing that wormholes could exist checks out. There's a fair chance that they could really be out there. Unfortunately, these wormholes would have absolutely no practical application for humans. But people promised wormholes would be able to do so many cool things, and scientists and sci-fi enthusiasts alike really want those things to be a reality. Come on! So to that end, let's look at a much more theoretical proposal.
So a traversable wormhole, as the name suggests, is a wormhole that humans or other matter could actually pass through as a means of transit. This was obviously the dream from the moment wormholes were first proposed as a possibility, but Wheeler and Fuller had to ruin everybody's fun by showing us that these bridges would just be too unstable and short-lived to possibly ever be traveled through. In order to make a wormhole traversable, it was believed that the solution lied in something called exotic matter. There are numerous different types of exotic matter and exotic particles that have been hypothesized, but what unites them all is that we have no proof that they actually exist. Exotic matter would have odd behavior that seems to run counter to the laws of physics, sometimes breaking those laws. For the case of wormholes, the exotic matter we want would need to have negative mass. This violates one of the energy conditions in general relativity, specifically that the energy density of a region of space cannot be negative. But relativity is incomplete, so maybe that particular energy condition is incorrect. After all, matter with negative mass doesn't have to violate any other law of physics by necessity, it would just be a little bit weird. Negative mass accelerates in the opposite direction of the force that is applied to it. For example, if you tried to drop a ball with negative mass onto the ground, the force of gravity would instead launch it off into space. This is extremely strange to us, since it runs counter to how all other matter in the universe works. But it doesn't have to be impossible. It's all mathematically consistent and wouldn't violate the conservation of momentum. Most importantly for wormholes, this could keep a bridge open long enough to be traversable. When a wormhole, as we defined them previously, opens, the tunnel would be immediately pinched off and crushed by the force of gravity. But because negative mass is repelled by gravity rather than attracted to it, injecting negative mass into a wormhole could instead force it to stay pried open. That's all well and good, except for the multiple, seemingly impossible problems that this entails. We need to find matter with negative mass, which we don't actually know exists. Then we'd need to find a wormhole, which we don't actually know exists. Then we'd need to get all of this negative mass inside the wormhole, even though the wormhole should destroy itself faster than light can pass through it. So yeah, all of this just seems totally doable, doesn't it? There's also one other potential problem with this plan, and that's you. Even if scientists are able to force a wormhole to stay open, that doesn't necessarily mean it would be traversable. You are not made of negative mass, so it's possible that by trying to pass through a wormhole, you'd actually break it. The bridge would need to maintain a negative energy density in order to remain open, and the introduction of a person or spaceship could throw off that balance and allow the bridge to collapse with you inside it. Luckily, your death would be faster than the speed of light since you'd be crushed by the entire gravitational force of a black hole. So that's nice. Another possible issue with a traversable wormhole is Hawking radiation. Even if everything else was stable, it's speculated that wormholes would give off Hawking radiation just like black holes, causing them to shrink and eventually close. This would put a limit on their utility, like how a stargate could only remain open for 38 minutes. Of course, while they're the most popular and well-known, einstein rosen bridges joining black and white holes aren't the only ones that are theorized to exist. The concept of wormholes is as tantalizing to scientists as it is to the general population, so there are new theories being created every year about other ways in which these could possibly work. One such theory is the ER equals EPR conjecture. This was proposed in 2013 by American physicist Leonard Susskind and Argentine physicist Juan Maldacino, and the conjecture's name is completely self-explanatory. At least it is if you happen to know what those abbreviations mean. ER refers to the Einstein-Rosen bridge, and the EPR is the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox. That paradox discussed quantum entanglement and the belief that quantum mechanics was incomplete. So, what Susskind and Maldacena are claiming is that quantum entangled particles are actually being connected to one another by wormholes. Another possible source of wormholes comes from string theory. If string theory is correct, there is also the belief that wormholes could be held open by negative mass strings. In 1995, it was put forth in a paper by John Kramer et al. that such wormholes could have been created at the origins of the universe. While originally only existing on the Planck scale, if these wormholes were stable, then cosmic inflation could have stretched them out to the macroscopic scale. Essentially, there could already be large, traversable wormholes out there somewhere, and we just haven't found any of them yet. So as we've established, we currently don't know if traversable wormholes will be possible. But for the sake of argument, let's assume that they are. We'll assume that the necessary exotic matter exists, that we're able to find it in large enough quantities to be useful to us, and that the introduction of regular matter through the wormhole doesn't change the energy density of the wormhole's tunnel enough to cause it to collapse. If all of these things are true, wormholes, theoretically, could do all the things that we've been promised by science fiction. 
However, there's a good chance that we'll have to make our own in order for them to be useful. And that's no small task, as our best understanding of wormholes requires us to first create black holes. Assuming all of this is possible, however, once we create a black hole and its corresponding white hole, again assuming that those are also real, we can simply move them to different points in the universe to position their entrances to our wormhole wherever we desire. Now, the word simply is doing a lot of the heavy lifting there, but just go with it. Once we can accomplish all of this, wormholes really should be able to do pretty much everything you've heard. Using these man-made wormholes wouldn't allow you to visit an alternate universe, but they could create shortcuts all across the universe. We could turn Earth into a commuter hub of wormholes, with each tunnel leading to a different part of our galaxy and beyond. It would take a long time to build such a system, since we'd need to carry the other end of the wormhole to the target destination the old-fashioned way the first time, but all subsequent voyages would take a mere fraction of the time. And yes, if we're able to both create and manipulate the mouths of the wormhole, then it really would allow for the possibility of time travel. At least, the math says that it should be possible, though many scientists believe the universe simply will not allow humans to break the chain of causality. Regardless, the process would again be theoretically simple, though practically quite difficult. All we would need to do is accelerate one of the ends of the wormhole to close to the speed of light. Ideally, it would travel in a small orbit around a fixed point at that speed. Anyway, at these relativistic speeds, time would slow down dramatically compared to the other end of the tunnel. Essentially, the one end of the wormhole would continue moving forward through time as normal, while the other would essentially be frozen in time as seen by an outside observer. However, the way this would be utilized is probably the opposite of what you might assume. You might logically think that entering through the end of the tunnel that has aged more and exiting out the one that has aged less would send you back in time, but you've actually got it backwards. While to an outside observer, one end of the tunnel would be older and one would be younger, for people on either end of the wormhole, their clocks would be synchronized. This means that by entering the end of the tunnel that is traveling close to the speed of light, time on the other end would sync up to match your perspective. When you emerge on the other end, you would do so back when that end of the wormhole was the same age that the younger side was when you entered. And if any of that's pretty confusing, the important part is that creating and manipulating wormholes should allow backwards time travel, and the actual process of traveling is counterintuitive. That said, there are, of course, some limitations. While the wormhole would allow you to travel through both time and space, you don't get to travel anywhere and to any time that you want. For example, you can't travel back in time to Austria in 1889 to kill baby Hitler. The earliest point you could travel back to was the initial creation of the makeshift time machine, and you would always arrive wherever in space the other end of the wormhole was. That's not to say that it wouldn't still be really cool and potentially paradox-inducing, but it's a far cry from having total mastery over time itself. So it's hard to say exactly what the future holds for wormholes, but scientists are going to continue to pursue them. They're an extremely exciting proposition that could be a key shortcut to galactic expansion, not to mention how incredible it would be to discover backwards time travel. In 2022, there were even news stories that scientists had created the first ever wormhole in a lab. There were also news stories that said that no, they didn't, and the whole thing came across as both sensationalized and bewildering. The initial paper that was published in November of 2022 by Daniel Jaffaris et al. was focused around using quantum computers to test the ERE equals EPR conjecture. It's also important to note that the computer was being used to run a simulation, not a genuine attempt to create wormholes. They weren't actually creating wormholes any more than your PlayStation created a wormhole any time you fired the portal gun. Still, even if the work they were doing didn't necessarily bring us one step closer to using wormholes for interstellar travel, it was still exciting work. The test supported the ER equals EPR conjecture, and it's believed by many scientists that this conjecture could be a major step forward in unifying general relativity with quantum mechanics. Doing so would be huge, and anything that brings us closer to a better understanding of our universe brings us closer to achieving the unimaginable. Unfortunately, there's also another possibility, which is that wormholes are more of an optical illusion than anything else. This theory relies on the idea that wormholes would require at least one additional spatial dimension, which, given their nature, isn't completely out Landish. But what the theory suggests is that entrances to wormholes are illusions similar to a 3D representation of a Klein bottle. A Klein bottle is a four dimensional mathematical construct that has only one side and no start or end, similar to a Mobius strip. While a 3D representation of these bottles appears to have been an opening, the object you see is actually the shadow of the four dimensional object. 
This shadow creates the illusion that the bottle can be filled, but the true 4D shape doesn't have any openings. According to the theory that wormholes require an additional spatial dimension, the entrances to wormholes would be a similar illusion and there wouldn't really be a tunnel through which anything could travel. All we can do now is wait to see which, if any of these many theories about wormholes turns out to be true. We're just hoping it's one of the fun theories that allows us to break space and time, because that'd be cool.